Hello all, welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to discuss about Jenkins scripted pipeline demo. So we have already discussed about Jenkins scripted pipelines in my previous video. So if you have not watched it, you can go and watch. Now in this video, we are going to see how to create a scripted pipeline with the help of Jenkins file. So let's start. So first thing, what you have to do to create a pipeline, you have to install a pipeline plugin. So I have already installed it. I will show you how to install it. So you have to go to manage Jenkins and you should have a admin rights to install the any plugins. So I, I it's my local system. So I have admin rights. So you have to go to manage Jenkins, manage plugins and you have to search in available plugins called pipeline. So for me, it's not visible because I have already installed it. If I go to my install section, and I will search here pipeline so we can see here it's a pseudo plugin that let you orchestrate automation so with the help of this particular plugin you can uh, use the pipeline so if you have to verify if pipeline plugin is installed or not in your environment then how you will check you have to go to new item and here you can see pipeline if it's not visible here then you have to install the plugin from the manage plugin section so now what I will do, I'll create an empty pipeline. Pipeline type I'll select as a pipeline. If I'll go down, you can see here in pipeline definition. So here basically there are two ways you can define your pipeline. One is pipeline script, it means you have you have to write your code here itself. And another option we have pipeline script from SCM. So from here basically uh, we will fetch the Jenkins file from the source control. It could be a git, bitbucket, sbn, any, any source control from where we will fetch. So in this particular demo what I am going to do, I am going to fetch the Jenkins file from the github. So I will just save it. So now what we have to do, first we have to create a Jenkins file and we have to push the Jenkins file in the github so so I have already written a, a Jenkins file for the scripted pipeline so I will show you what basically we are going to achieve with the help of scripted pipeline so to summarize basically what we are going to do with this scripted pipeline so we are, fetch, we are basically fetching some data from the database so if you go to this particular steps here I have written a select query so here basically we are fetching the data from the categories table and similar in another steps we have fetching the data from the employee table. So that's what we are going to do with the help of this particular Jenkins file. So now I will explain you what we what are the properties we have defined here. So if you see here these are property blocks. So this is nothing it's a Jenkins job property. So if you see build discarder so it means how long basically or how many records you have to keep for this particular build so you can define the number so for I have defined 20 builds record I have to keep for this particular uh, job next we have disable concurrent build next we have parameters so this is the runtime parameters and we can overwrite it also so if I will go back to my Jenkins shop and I will go to configure so if I will go down so here you can see uh, discard old builds. So here we have log rotations, days to keep builds, maximum number of builds to keep. So the same things I have defined with the help of Jenkins uh, scripted pipeline. And if you talk about parameters, so these are the parameters which we have defined. So if I'll go back here. So you have to select this project is parameterized this option is not checked yet as soon as we execute one time this particular uh, job it will by default it will uh, check this box and you have to define the parameters it could be string boolean so all those you have to define so we are using a string parameter because in this particular file we are what we are storing here at runtime we are storing the database name which is north wind and the string is another we have database server name so this is the server IP address where we have database server is running so these two things we are storing as a parameter so at the if you want to override these values so during the runtime you can override also if you have different server or different database name you can change it 
next we have a node so the node is a machine on which jenkins run so in node basically is used in a scripted pipeline only if you are using declarative pipeline you cannot use node element so under node we have stages so stages as we know <coughs> just <coughs> so this this block basically contain a series of steps in a pipeline so if you see here we have one step here another step we have here so like this we can define as per our requirement so in steps before steps we have one option called with credentials so basically this is help to wind the credentials credential binding if you have to do you can you have to use with credential in a scripted pipeline and similarly in declarative pipeline we have a uh, credential helper so we will see when we see a declarative pipeline demo so here what i am doing i have created a one username and password in the jenkins itself so if i'll go back to my jenkins manage jenkins if i'll go to my uh, credential manage credentials so if you see this id this is a db id db underscore credential so here basically what i have done i have stored the database username and database passwords and i have masked it so if i'll go back to my uh, visual studio code so you can see credential id we have specified db underscore cred so this is our credential id and this credential id will contain the username if i'll open it so you can see username and password so and with this with the help of this credential id we are fetching this username and passwords so if i'll go back to my visual studio code so for the username password variable we have i have defined a one variable to save the password in this so basically we are going to save the password in this particular variable and similarly for username of this particular database we are storing in this particular variable and if we talk about steps in steps what i am doing i am using the with environment variable so what is it's basically environment variable which we are fetching with the help of with environment so if you see here variable underscore db server so we have a environment variable parameter dot db server so which we have defined here if you see here the parameter value so we have db underscore name and db under underscore db server so those two things basically we are specified as a parameter so the with the help of with environment we are fetching these details so if you see so variable underscore db server equal to parameters dot db server because we are using this as a parameter but there is a one issue for every pipeline in a job is i mean uh, every parameter sorry in a job is available to powershell as an environment variable like if you have to use these particular parameters in your pipeline powershell script which we are using here so what you have to do you have to use as an environment variable in powershell script it will not support parameter directly so here what i am doing i am using this particular variable variable underscore db server and i am saving the value of this particular parameter on this particular variable and now in powershell script what i am doing i am using this variable as a environment variable because as we as i told you powershell does not support direct parameters it should be a environment format environment variable format so that's what basically we are doing here so similarly uh, for db name also i am using the same things like i am storing parameter in a one of the variable and this variable we are using as a environment variable here so it's similarly for all the other db user and db passwords so that's how basically we run the powershell script with the help of scripted pipeline so if you see if you have to run powershell you have to use three uh, commas here so same things i am doing within this step also and we are running finally catch apps ex exception if this particular try block is getting failed then it will switch to this particular catch block so in similarly there is another node block node so in scripted pipeline we can use as many as node as we want 
but in declarative pipeline we cannot use like it's a basically predefined structure which we have to use so for like for more complex scenarios we generally use scripted pipelines and even it's very old but for complex scenario it suits like basically uh, based on our requirement you have to choose but for complex scenarios we have to use a scripted pipeline because it's provide some limitations so <coughs> that's how i have written this scripted pipeline so now what i have done i have pushed this particular data on the github repositories if i'll go back to my github account so this is the jenkins pipeline is my repo and here i have created a scripted pipeline so same code i have copied here and we are going to fetch this particular file in the jenkins job so i'll go to my jenkins job now i'll click on configure so these pro pro parameters or properties i am not going to select because at the run time when we run the uh, powershell sorry uh, jenkins uh, jenkins shop it will automatically take we will see so what i am going to do i am just going to add the github repository url here and i'll add the credential of this particular repo url and we are going to run this shop so i what i will do now i will copy my jenkins url from here credentials i will use my credentials so it's authenticated successfully next we have to specify the branch so by default it's coming master if i'll go back to it i have a main branch so i'll just change it name here now script path you have to specify here so what is the path of this particular so in main repo we have directly scripted pipeline so i'll just copy this name here i'll apply and save now i will run this job so you can see it's fetch this data uh, like basically we are fetching data from two tables so from one table it category table it's already fetched the data and from the another table employee table it's fetched the data so it means it's working fine so if you see all this detail customer id company names all the data is basically fetching so my pipeline job succeeded if i'll go back to my pipeline configuration now you can see whatever the uh, properties we have specified here same thing it's already automatically selected here so if you see discard old builds number of builds we have defined 20 it's already taken do not allow concurrent builds then parameters if you see the db name northwind db server this particular ip address of the server ip address so if you want to override this value you can run time override this value as well so you can define if you have another database you can define the name and details here and you can also you save this particular uh, user db server and uh, database name in the jenkins configuration itself so basically that's how uh, jenkins job work if you if i'll go back to my output you can see these are the stages run db script fetching customer details so basically stages represent the pipeline it could be a build deploy so if i'll go back to my uh, visual studio code so if you can see one stage we have run db script in this particular script we have two tasks two steps and if i'll go back to my next stage we have a fetching customer details so if i'll go back to my jenkins you can see these two stages so you can keep the name as per your requirement like whatever you are doing you can specify the name from here sorry not here uh, in this particular jenkins file and you can execute so that's all for today see you in next video next video we'll see in how to create a script declarative pipeline because this nowadays it's basically recently they have introduced a declarative pipeline so we will see how to create a declarative pipeline and what i will do i'll create a 
i'll add the github url for this particular jenkins file in my description also so if you want to have a look on this particular file or if you have if you want to execute in your know, local or for testing purpose you can check it out it's a public repository so you can take it out from there so thank you so much see you next video